CataractCoach.com, why your surgical volume may decrease. Going from training to your practice is not easy. Here's why. So you're a young doctor in training. You're finishing your residency, maybe your fellowship. You're getting excited to get out there into practice. And I got one surprise for you that you may not realize. And that is in your first or second year of surgical practice, your volume of surgery is going to go down. What? Yes. When you're a resident or a fellow, the surgeries are just fed to you. There's seemingly an endless supply of surgeries. You could just operate every day, every week, and you never get through the backlog. It's just amazing to have so many patients waiting for surgery, right? But you get into practice, and all of a sudden, your surgical volume will drop. So if you did 200 or 300 cataracts as a senior resident, and now you're going right into practice, you may do 20 or 30 cataracts the entire first year of your practice. That volume is going to drop. And the reason why it ends up dropping is the hard part in the community is not just doing the surgery. It's not just meeting those lofty patient expectations. It's actually getting the patients in the door. How do you get the patients in the door? So while we all say when we're residents or fellows, when I'm in practice, I wanna go out there and I wanna do a huge volume of surgery. I wanna be a high volume cataract or refractive surgeon. That's a great goal, but it does take time to build that up. And you may not be able to achieve that right out of the gates. So you gotta be patient there. The other question to ask yourself, if you're joining a group, are you just coming to that group to be fed cases? Or do you have a smarter way of growing their practice, increasing patient referrals to the practice. Now, it depends on your situation. If you're joining a group where there are older doctors who don't do much in terms of social media, maybe you can bring that. You're a young, smart doctor. You have a lot of experience in that arena. Maybe you can bring that to the table. Maybe these surgeons don't really reach out to other doctors in the community. Maybe you can plan on that. But you want to do more than just come there to help carry the weight, you want to actually help grow the practice. And so those are important concepts. So be prepared, your very first year in practice, your surgical volume may be a lot lower than it was during your residency or your fellowship training. And that's okay, use that other, the free time that you have there to work on things, work on some of the more complex cases, talk to your partners or other ophthalmologists in your community, say, you know, I really enjoy doing these complicated sutured in IOLs, Yamane technique or the Gore-Tex tech, whatever it is. Hey, would you, would you mind referring me to those patients? I'd really love to work with you in that regard. And you'll be surprised. So a busier surgeon like me, I don't necessarily want to do a lot of these sutured and IOLs. In fact, here in the community, I actually rarely perform those. I'd rather send them to a different doctor, one of my former residents who's now in the community, and he'll do a beautiful job of a full vitrectomy and sutured in uh, lens to the sclera using the Gore-Tex and a beautiful result. And instead of me doing it, I think we're better off having my, my former resident do it, who's now a vitroretinal specialist in practice. And then the same way, when you go into your practice, you may want to talk to these other surgeons who say, you know, I'd rather not have to deal with those tough ones. Let me send them to a young guy or gal who's super energetic and has the skills to uh, kind of devote to this patient. So keep these things in mind. When you start practice, your surgical volume may decrease. That's okay. Use the time in other regards. With increased patient referrals, develop new referral sources. Maybe if you have a subspecialty like you like cornea, maybe increase the amount of lamellar transplantations that are referred to your practice. A lot of different options here and uh, don't be disheartened when your surgical volume initially decreases. One more thing to remember too, is sometimes the fallacy or the myth that there's an even distribution of surgery in the community. It's not. You need to look up the Pareto Principle, P-A-R-E-T-O. Very important to understand this. What that essentially says is that oftentimes, 80% of the surgery is done by 20% of the surgeons. Not an even distribution. That's that 80-20 rule that people quote. It's the Pareto Principle, P-A-R-E-T-O. Look it up and you tell me what you think in the comments below. I want you to post a comment down there and tell me when you first started practice, if you're a young ophthalmologist, 
or even if you're like me, mid-career, when you first started practice, what was your surgical volume like? And what did you do to build that up? Thanks for watching.